All right, hello again, computational thinking, and welcome to the programming portion of this NTI video. Before we get into actually writing some code, uh, I want to go over a little review of some things we've learned about strings and lists. And it's really important that you get a solid understanding of strings because uh, almost everything that we're going to be doing with these text files involves strings. And a lot of times we're going to be putting those strings into lists. So if you've forgotten some stuff and need to go back and review, I've put this little thing together to kind of um, ignite your brain housing group and hopefully get you uh, looking at the things you need to be looking at. So um, right here I've got some string methods and tools. We've got things like dot replace, which allows us to replace a substring. That means like a character inside of a string. So um, we could change the name Tommy to Tammy pretty easily using the replace method. Um, we've got strip, R strip and L strip. They all sort of do the same thing. Ultimately, they're removing white space um, or new line characters from uh, part of the string. We oh, thank you, sweetheart. Want to say hello? This is Lily. Well, no one's on there right now, but they're going to be watching this video later to learn about uh, stuff with programming. Can we say hi? Yeah, you can say hi. Okay, you back upstairs? Love you. Can I get an open Yeah. Oh, is there something in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So. Did you see it? No. Bookmark came out when I opened it. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll see you in a little bit, okay? I love you. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. That didn't take too long. We'll just keep going. Um, yeah, strip, right, removes characters from, uh, or not, not characters, but it removes like white space and that kind of stuff. Just experiment it, experiment with it, and I'll show you some examples when we're going through the work. Um, upper, lower, and title, uh, they uppercase a string, they lowercase a string, or they give it title case, like a, a, a proper noun. Um, dot split, splits a string on a specific character, so that's something you're going to want to take a look at to get a specific understanding of if you've forgotten. And dot join is another kind of strange method, you'll want to look at that on your own. Don't forget that we can slice lists um, using their indices, just like we can use indexes on lists, uh, or in lists. And then we've got string formatting, so you will find string formatting handy uh, in the future for some more some more challenging work that we're going to do, um, where we need to use variables in our strings. It's a lot easier than trying to use concatenation. Okay, uh, and let's see, where's my other slide? There we go. We're also going to be working with lists pretty often, and uh, pretty basic methods there: append, pop, and insert. Append adds something to the end of a list. Pop removes something from the end of a list by default and returns that value so you can store it somewhere else. Uh, insert inserts a specific element somewhere at a specific index in a list. Um, and then we can also access the elements inside of the list. We can change what, what's at those element or at what's at those indexes. So um, here's a little example with cars, right? Um, you can see that car starts out with Honda, Toyota, BMW. Um, when we replace what's at index zero in cars with Subaru, um, we you know officially change that list and we can see that in the printed um, list there. So uh, that's strings and list. You really do wanna take a moment to get refreshed on strings, especially um, probably if you haven't touched that stuff in a little while or you've kind of forgotten about it. So I'd encourage you to go out and look at these methods right here uh, and, and these tools again, okay? All right, so let's move on to the programming portion. All right, I'm gonna go over to a new REPL here, um, and you should work in a new REPL as well. The first thing that I need to do is I need to have a file to work with. Right now, I don't have anything. Luckily, you can import files directly into REPL from your computer, or you can just create them right here. So if we wanted to upload a file, we would click on our little menu here and we go to upload file. But I'm not going to do that today, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to call it recipe.txt. Now it's important that you use the right file extension. Okay, for right now I'm going to leave it blank. Let's go back to main.py and we'll write a little code. Okay, 
So in order to get this text file into our computer's memory and work with it, we need to open it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say my file, this will be our variable for right now, and we'll say open. And then the file we want to open is a string containing the file name, so recipe.txt. Okay, great. So now if I run this code and I say my file, I get this strange output. It says this is a text IO wrapper object. Um, its name is recipe.txt, its mode is R. That's all kind of gobbledygook for now. We're not too concerned about it, so don't worry too much. But what's but what we can do now, now that we have this file open in memory, is we can read it, okay? We can ask the computer to read what's in that file back to us. So if I say um, file contents will be um, holding the result of my file.read, okay? So we're calling the read method of this file object and we're storing the return value in file contents. Now, if we run our code, We'll say file contents over here to take a look at what's in there. I'll expand this a little bit. Okay, um, we get nothing, right? Uh, or yeah, we get nothing. So if we say file contents, yeah, it's an empty string because recipe.txt is an empty file. There's nothing in there, so this is um, nothing at all. Uh, let's put a recipe inside of recipe.txt. So let's make some chocolate chip cookies. Um, We'll say chocolate chip cookies, and we make those with flour, milk, oops, eggs, chocolate chips, uh, and some meat butter as well, if we want good cookies. So that's our recipe.txt file. It's already saved. Don't worry about having to click save somewhere. Replit's gonna do that for you. And now if we go back to main.py, we run this again, and we say, hey, what is in this file contents variable? Okay, so we get this string back and it's in file contents, right? But it's a little unusual. And you might recall that each of these backslash in characters that we see that have showed up, um, those are new lines, okay? And a new line is anytime I went through this text file and I press the enter key on my keyboard, that creates a new line. So the way Python represents that in a string is with a backslash n, okay? Now, um, let's, since we've read our file, we've um, done everything we needed to do with it, we're gonna go ahead and close it. So I will say now my file dot close, and that will close the file for, from any further operations, okay? And what that also does is it takes it out of the computer's memory, which is really important, okay? Um, the thing is, what if you know we're, we're coding along and we write some code right here and it's buggy code, and this buggy code causes our program to stop working correctly, and we never get down to line five, which is myfile.close. What would happen? If you're thinking, well, maybe the file would just stay open, you're right. And then we would think about, well, what happens if files are just staying open in the computer's memory, okay? If you think about doing this maybe a hundred times, all of a sudden you've got a situation where your computer's memory is full of all these files that should not be open but still are. And that's really, really bad because we don't want to occupy computer memory unnecessarily, right? It's gonna slow our computer down. Um, you've probably heard of the term RAM, random access memory. It's the working memory that your computer uses to run all the programs that are um, that you use every day. Your phone has it, your computer at home has it, your laptop. If it has a computer, it has a little bit of RAM at the very least, okay? Um, and that RAM is really valuable. It's all we have, it's all the memory we have to run the programs on our computer. So what I'm gonna show you now is the correct way to open a file without having to worry about buggy code not causing the file to be closed. This is what we call a best practice. So we're switching from something that works, this works just fine, we did it correctly, um, to something that we would consider a best practice. It's what you should do unless you have a very specific reason not to do it, okay? So I'm going to change my code. I'm gonna leave this line in because it will still work just fine. And I will say with open, okay, 
and I'm going to give it the file name, recipe.txt. So it's a little bit like we were doing before. And I'm going to do one more thing here that's important. I'm going to specify what method I'm using to open the file. And that's the read method, and we specify that with an R. Okay? So that R uh, represents read, and we're, what we're saying with our code here is we're only opening this file to read, and that's important. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to say, okay, I'm going to open this. How am I going to open it, or, or what am I going to represent this file as in my code? It's the same thing as giving it a variable. So we'll say file contents again. So we'll say with open recipe.txt in read mode as file contents. And then just like we would for an if statement or a for loop or something like that, we'll include a colon. So this is a new block of code that we've created. We'll get rid of our pseudo bu buggy code here. And then we can actually drop this myfile.close from this. But I wanna show you one thing here. Um, oh, actually, so my file, that's gone away, right? We don't have my file anymore. So we'll say file contents dot read. And uh, we'll change this variable to be, actually, you know what? That's kind of a fail. Let's just, let's say uh, as my file, and then we'll say my file, or I'll say file contents, so my file. Dot read. So I owe you a fail. Maybe we'll come up with something interesting that you can uh, count. You, we can do if I fail inside of a video and decide not to do another take. It's a happy mistake. Uh, okay, so now uh, I'm using the with open method, which is the best practice, to read from this file. And I'm using the read method to get all of the contents of the file at one time and store them in file contents. This one method, read, it takes the entire file and reads it and stores it in file contents. Even if we had a file that was 100 million strings long, read would still do the job for us. It would, it would bring everything into file contents uh, and, and store it there, okay? All right, so let's do this. We're gonna drop our read method. Let's just make sure it still works the way we had it here. It does, okay. Um, our chocolate chip cookies recipe still looks right. So let's try this. Let's say, rather than doing this, we're gonna write a little for loop. And we'll say for line in my file, I'm going to print that line. Now we'll run it. All right, so we get a, a nice output of our recipe here, except we do have uh, these sort of extra spaces here and we can maybe get uh, get some idea of what's going on there by using an f string. So I'm going to say uh, f string here, and then um, I'll give it a, a value like um, line, and we'll see. We'll just see what we get when we do this. Okay. So notice that we get this empty space here after every line. Um, and that's what that, that new line character is causing that, even though it's not its own little line object. So every time we print out a line, we're printing out that new line character as well. It's important to recognize that that new line character is there and the output in Python, right, looks different than the, out, than the actual text file. Just keep that in mind, right? This space, this space here is sort of invisible to us inside of our text file, but Python reads it as that new line. So let's check this out. Rather than doing that, let's say line.rstrip. And now, look at that. So we get a very similar output to what we have in our text file. And the reason that is, is because rstrip will go through and remove those new lines for us. So that can, that can be handy. All right. Um, one more thing I want to show you, I think, let me see, I gotta check my notes here. Um, yeah, okay, so let's look, we'll look at two more things while Replit restarts here or whatever it's doing. Come on, Replit, I believe in you. Did I lose my internet connection? Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Of all the things to happen, my internet dies. 
So we were leaving off talking about how we're using the best practice of with open. Um, we are specifying the file that we're pulling this, uh, or specifying the file we're going to read from. And we know it's read because of this R. We're going to learn about the other word or the other uh, letters we can put in here to, to you know, use different methods. We can use write, we can use a pen, we can use a few others, but we're sticking with R for now. And remember that uh, when we say as my file, we are saying um, give this file, the, the contents of this file that we're opening up, give them a temporary name of my file. So basically, line one, you can think of it as open this file in the read mode and give it a label of my file for the purposes of my code. That's what line one is saying, okay? Um, and then we looped over it, we saw that we could strip out uh, new lines using our strip. One more thing I want to show you before we stop talking about read, uh, or actually two, two things, is the read lines method. Okay, so we looked at the read method, uh, and remember that the read method, dot read, reads the entire contents of the file, and then it's done. So it gets everything that it needs, it can store it in a variable. So we said file contents is my file dot read, and that gives us everything that's in the file and uh, file contents would just be this string right here, okay? So, um, what if we want to read and work with each line individually, um, but we don't wanna have to figure it all out within for one for loop, right? So we, we did that for loop before where we said for line in my file, and that works if you just wanna do something small, but what if we wanted to create a permanent data structure that contained every line? So the way we're going to do that is with a method called read lines. That would look like this. So we'll say file contents again, um, and we'll say my file dot read lines. Now, if I run this and say file contents, look at what I get. I get a nice list where everything is separated line by line uh, at a separate index. So each element in this list, one element another element, another element, index zero, index one, index two, right? Each of these represents a line in this file that we have read. Uh, and that's really powerful because now I can manipulate this file uh, and maybe work with it a little bit. I can move stuff around. I can, I can delete an element and replace it with something else. The, the, the possibilities are really endless here. So read lines is the last method um, that we're gonna look at for read. And uh, notice that when I'm using with open, I've yet to use the dot close method. And I don't need to. That's why it's a best practice. With open prevents me from having to worry about ever writing uh, my file dot close. Don't have to do it. Don't need it, ever. Because with open takes care of that for me. I don't have to worry about buggy code breaking my with open. It will automatically close the file at an appropriate time when Python thinks it's best. Um, and Python's smarter than we are about when we should close files most of the time. So we should trust it. Okay, that is the basics of reading from files. Now, I'll have an assignment for you on Google Classroom and you can expect a short multiple choice assessment as well on Friday. So what you are going to be responsible for, your homework, is completing um, what I ask you to do from the Python Crash Course book, uh, and that's going to be in, I believe, chapter 10. Okay, yeah, chapter 10. Um, it's going to go over what we just went over. You're going to put your hands on the keyboard and do it as well, uh, and then we'll have a short uh, multiple choice assessment on Friday. I'll have more details about that in Google Classroom. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time.